Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. How many of y'all believe that, uh, that God is still in control? It's important that you believe that. It's important that you believe that. Um, I'm ready to preach if y'all ready to listen. I was back there in the back, man, just jumping, hooping, hollering. And sometimes God brings me out here in the sanctuary. And I just want to be a part of you. And uh, I wish I could hug every one of you. And I will be able to hug every one of you here soon. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, listen to me. Uh, we need to listen to the good news. The good news. The Bible is not called the bad news. It's called the good news. And so what I want to do, I want to preach. I want to preach something's going to mess y'all up. Because, man, we live in a world that uh, the gloom and the doom, you know. And uh, so today what I want to do, I want to I preach on a subject that God gave me. And I, I've shared this title with people. And it's like, man, it's not the time to, to preach that, Brian. It's time to give people a way out. If you are a child of God and you don't know the way out, you're, you're not really a child of God. We know that Jesus Christ is the answer. But today what I want to do, man, really quick, I want to give you all a word I titled it, I Serve a Happy Thanksgiving God. I Serve a Happy Thanksgiving God. Go ahead, and I want y'all to help me today, all right? Because I feel I'm at the right church. I feel I'm at the right place. Now, if I was at the First Baptist of Frigidaire, I might, I might be in a little trouble today, all right? But uh, I Serve a Happy Thanksgiving God. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and say, I, I Serve a Happy God. Come on, y'all. Look, work with me today, Elkhorn. Work with me. Because some of y'all are paying more attention to the empty seats than you are the one who's filled the seats. I serve, whether y'all like this or not, and I'm going to prove, I'm going to prove that I serve a happy God. Now, I know you look at a lot of Christians and you're sitting there going, there, that's, that's not too happy. If that is called a child of God, I don't want to be a part of it. Hey, look, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. All right, because half the people that I talk to, you don't know if they're saved, lost, going to hell, going to heaven. You don't know nothing about them. But I serve a happy God. And before you leave today, you're going to show somebody some gums or some teeth. Either one. I don't care what you got up in that head. Either teeth or gums. Well, you're going you're gonna to be going like that. You're going to smile. We got a lot to be thankful for whether you realize it or not. We're going to heaven. We're not going to hell. We are alive. We're in church. We can worship God freely. You ain't got a gun held to your head. And I'm just telling you, we need to take a five-second praise break and just say, God, I serve a happy, 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 happy God. Come on. Let's show this world that God is good. That God is good. He's not dead. He's not fell off his throne. He's a good father. Amen. I serve a happy God. Woo! Now, if your neighbor's still sitting down, you might want to move. Here's what I'm saying. Listen to me. We should be the happiest people. Brian, do you realize what's going on? I told someone this week, it's great. I just love Jesus. They, look, they said, Brian, this, all this is happening. And I understand. I'm not making light. It's out there. All right, it's, it's out there. It's real. But I know truth. It's real. But I know truth. It's real. But I know a man named Truth. And I'm going to stand on the truth because if you think the real outweighs the truth, you're going to be upset all the time. So let me, let me y'all ready? I, I'm so, I serve a happy, Phil Robinson says, happy, happy, happy. Happy God. So if you're not a happy Christian, this is going to be a bad service for you. I serve a happy God. Exodus chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. And you can tell the happy people, the ones that are sitting there with their arms crossed. I'm going to get this. Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. Exodus chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. The Bible says, and God spoke to Moses, read now the New King James. And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I am. I am the Lord. I appeared, watch this, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I appeared to all three of them as God Almighty. Watch this, but. But my name, Lord, 
was not known to them. That's a pirate. Listen to me. But my name, Lord, listen, but my name, Lord, was not known to them. So in other words, Abraham, can I teach just for a minute and then I'll preach here in just a moment. In other words, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob only knew God how they seen him. Y'all got me? How they seen him. But God told Moses, and I love this, and I'm going to share it with you. And I believe that God is telling me and you here today that, that, that I'm going to show you something about me that you've never seen before. I'm going to show you in these latter days things you've never seen before. And I want to, i got to, God is getting ready whether you believe me or not. I know that we got things going on. I know that there's seasons. I know they come and go. I know we're dealing with COVID. I know we're dealing, watch this. We, we have more people die from cancer and flu. But here's what I'm saying. God says, I'm getting ready to show you something you've never seen before. I, I can't get that out of my heart. I'm getting ready to show you something, pray that you've never seen before. I know Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all they could see was what they seen in me. But they did not know me as Lord. Lord means owner. A lot of people know Jesus as Savior, but very few know him as Lord. Hallelujah. Watch this. See, we can only reflect of God is what we see of God. Y'all hang with me. If you see God as mean, (laughs) if you see God as angry, if you see God like he's out to get you, if you see God mad and upset all the time, watch this. That's the kind of God you're going to reflect here on earth. So many people have only seen one kind of God. Mm. And I'm not going to lie. When I was growing up, I was going to be true with you. I was scared to death of God. I was absolutely scared. To, and I understand, listen to all my people out there. Listen, listen. I understand we need to honor God. Respect God. And have a righteous fear of the Lord. I understand that. But I was scared that I thought he was after me. I thought he, I'll be honest, I thought he was going to kill me if I sinned. Everybody was, we used the the altar as a whipping post. But listen, the altar is a beautiful thing. The altar is where I got saved. The altar is where I got born again. The altar is where I got married. But listen, I'm, I'm just telling you, we serve a God that loves us. I'm going to break this curse off this generation in Jesus Christ's name. God loves us. God loves us. He's a good, good father. He's a happy God. Well, he, watch, I feel the Holy Ghost. God's not sitting up in heaven losing sleep about what's going on here on earth. Watch your actions and your attitude does not dictate God. The way you feel this morning. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't feel good this morning. Watch this. Okay. Wait, the way you worship. God's like going to sit up here and go, well, my God, if they don't worship me, I'm going to sit down. Watch this. I'm just telling y'all. We do not dictate God. He's God. He's sovereign. Listen to this. In John chapter 10, verse 10, he says, I came. Watch this. I can love this. Y'all, y'all, y'all pay more attention to part A than you do part B. I know Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But. Everybody say but. Everybody say but. Watch what he says. I came to give you life. I received this if y'all don't. And not just a normal life. Not just an average life. Not just a get by life. I come to give you a life that is full and abundant. I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. You say, Brian, why are you like it? Because I'm happy. I'm happy. I ain't going to hell. That right there, Courtney, above it all, makes me happy. I ain't going to burn. I ain't going to see, no, see no gnashing of teeth. I ain't going to hear a lie all my life for eternity. I'm going to heaven and you want me to act like hell? What's wrong with you? I serve a happy God. When people come to church, <laughs> they should see happy people. Not perfect people. Y'all listen to let me teach. Not, not, I mean, nobody's perfect. If they are, get away from them. It's the devil. 
And watch this. If you find the perfect church, don't join it. You'll mess it up. I, I worked on this hard. Don't sit there, please. I know we all got something going on. How many of y'all got something going on besides you? Everybody has got something going on in their lives. And I know we deal with pain. I know we deal with hurt. I know we have sickness going on in our land. But I, I, I'm not making light of that. But watch this. I also know where my help comes from. Oh, I know this stuff. And listen, I'm happy this morning. I want you to know that I'm happy. I don't want to be a sad pastor. I don't want to get up here and give y'all a gloom and a doom. I don't want to get up here and speak death over your life. I got some good news this morning. Hallelujah. God's a good God. He's not forgot about you. God's not forgot about Elkhorn. God's not forgot about all this stuff. God is good all by himself. He's still God. He's a happy God, whether you realize it or not. Hallelujah. And watch this. People don't really, I'm going to be honest with you. Because I had more pastors say, Brian, I'm telling you, this is not the right time to preach this. I'm preaching it. People really don't know what, how to act or what to think when they see happy people. I can look at some of you, some of you sitting there going, Oh, why, are they so, why are they so happy in this church? Because we believe the Bible. <laughs> and we believe God, God is for us. And that God's not against us. And the greater is he that is in us. Hallelujah. That might help me this morning. And he is in the world. And I'm the head and I'm not the tail. He's going to bless me no matter where I'm, I'm going in or if I'm coming out, if I'm standing down, if I'm rising up. He's just a good, happy God. Somebody give him praise in here today. I feel this. I feel this this morning. I feel this this morning. They don't know. People don't know what to think when they see happy Christians. They don't. This week I was eating <laughs> at a local restaurant. It's great. B before Friday. <laughs> before Friday at five. And so uh, Thursday I was eating in a local restaurant. And this little girl or waitress. I, I was laughing. I was acting up like I always do. Most of the time. I'm a happy-go-lucky. I have my moments. Um, and I was smiling, laughing, just being happy. And this waitress, matter of fact, this is where the sermon come from. This waitress come up to the table and she said, can I ask you a question, please? And I went, yes, sir, baby, what you want? And she said these words, why are you so happy? And so that just opened up a can of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? That, that just says, I, you know, I'm glad you asked. Because I got something to be happy about. And so I'm just telling y'all truth. And so I had another pastor sitting right beside me, right in front of me. And he said, oh, this is going to be great. And so, man, I said, listen, I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. I'm, not, I'm, I'm well. I, I know I got a mask on. You can't tell who I am right now, but it's okay. And I said, God loves me. God loves you. I got my babies are healthy. I'm a pastor. And I, I'm glad to be a pastor. And I just went on and on and on, comma, on and on and on, comma. And, I, uh, and after it was over with, I got to pray with her. Yeah, I got to pray with her. And man, after it was over with Allison, here's the deal. She said, now I understand. And she kept coming back to the table, back to the table, back to the table. And getting some more Jesus, getting some more Jesus, getting some more Jesus. But what if I had sat there and she said, why, why are you saying, well, I, 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 I don't really know myself. Well, I, I know we got COVID going on. And everybody knows to jump in your trunk. In Jesus Christ's name, of course. Lean in and listen. It is time to step over the threshold. It's time to get a happy spirit in us. It is time that I pray holy laughter on everybody here today. That you just get a good old belly laugh. Hallelujah. That you get a bucket of joy in your life. And you say, Brian, I, I don't know about that. I'm talking to you. You need joy. Not, not Joey Hicks. He's good. Christina got him, hallelujah. He said, yeah, preach that preacher, hallelujah. Hallelujah, I feel the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. I'm just saying, let's be a happy church. Listen, and even if somebody dies and they're born again and they know Jesus, they are doing a whole lot better than you are, hallelujah. It's crazy, 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 crazy. I serve a happy God. Church and Facebook and family and friends, listen, we need to be happy. 
Christians need to be happy. Married people. Please be happy. I'm going to sing a song here in just a minute. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We're going to have fun here today. I am tired of hearing the media. I am tired of hearing the gloom and the doom. We need a happy spirit back in this church. We need, we've lost, listen to me. We need to be happy. We need to be happy. Why would somebody want to follow a mad, angry, upset, mean God? Huh? Who'd want to follow that? If somebody looked at your life, could they tell who you're following by the reactions of your face? Go ahead and look. <laughs> Go ahead and look at your neighbor. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Do it. Hey, listen, I want you to tell them this. If you're happy, now the rest of you, come on, tell your neighbors. If you're happy, come on. If you're happy, Go ahead and notify your face. I'm going to have fun today. <laughs> y'all can look at me all y'all want to, Brian. But I'm telling you, I serve a happy God. Look at your neighbor. Look at the other neighbor and say, come on, if you're happy, go ahead and notify your face. <laughs> Woo! How many of you know it's good to laugh in church? Yeah, it's good to laugh. I'm here today to just declare to you that God is a happy God. He's a joyful God. God loves people. God loves, watch this, God loves his creation. God loves church. He sure does. And God says, listen, he says, if, 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 while you got breath in your lungs, praise me. He said, praise me with the symbols. Praise me with the loud voice. Praise me in the dance. God wants us, watch, I know y'all don't hear preaching like this, but God wants us to have fun. God wants, this is so different from church, isn't it? Because you just, oh, you need to do this, you're going to hell. Well, who'd want to follow that? I'm just being honest with y'all. Why don't you look at somebody and just say, hey, listen, I'm going to take you to heaven with me. We're going to heaven together. You're not going to hell. I'm listening, that's just the way I am. So listen to me, I'm telling you. God isn't sitting up in heaven with his fingers in his ears <laughs> saying, I wish they'd be quiet. I wish they would just calm down. God's not up here going like this. My God, turn the music down. God's not up here going, God, look at them, they're acting stupid. No, 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 God, God says, God likes rejoicing. I don't care what y'all say. God, God, God knows how to throw a party. Hey, I know we Baptists don't. We do it when nobody's looking. But anyway. Oh. <laughs> Psalms 100 verse 4 says, enter. I love this. Y'all help me. Enter, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Let, let's just stop right there. Come on, somebody. Let's take a prayer. Are you happy this morning? Are you happy this morning? Are you happy this morning? We serve a happy God. Amen. I'm trying to preach really good today. I serve a happy God. Go ahead and notify your neighbor. God is happy. Hallelujah. God's happy. Yeah, God is happy. Whoo. I love y'all. Man, I love this church. Happy church. People who are serious all the time. They never smile. I'm talking to somebody. Never laugh. Never cut up. Sucking on a lemon all the time. Oh, just look. I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for people who don't have joy. I feel sorry for Christians who, who say, I'm born again, but you can't tell it by the way they talk. You, you can't tell it by the way they walk. You can't tell it by the way they praise. I'm just telling you, we should give hell some trouble today. We should say, Satan should wake up on Sunday morning and say, oh my God, Elkhorn's awake. Oh no, Courtney Waters, she just swung her feet over her bed. And when her feet touch the ground, there's going to be hell. On, I, yeah, she's going to give me hell today. Why y'all think they call it hell? Come on. I'm just telling you, listen to me. Christians, we should be the happiest people alive on earth. The Bible says in Philippians 4.4, 4, I'm almost done, I think. 
The Bible says rejoice. Oh, let, me, let me give you a good, another, another uh, paraphrase. Be sad in the Lord always. Again, I say be sad. Be mean in the Lord. I say again, be mean. Be upset in the Lord always. And again, I say be upset. Never smile in the Lord. Always never smile. Come on, I'm preaching. <laughs> I worked on this really hard, man. Y'all sitting there going. No, it says this, rejoice. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I'm going to read it again. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So good. Oh, by the way, y'all know who wrote that? His name's Paul. Paul was in prison. Oh no, it wasn't a concrete floor, it was a dirt floor. He didn't have a manicure or a pedicure. Hey. Yeah. He stunk. He got beat up. He got put in prison. So don't tell me if you're sitting in church and you don't got chains on your hands, you can't raise your hands and rejoice in the Lord always. Like I say again, rejoice. My God. Hallelujah. And y'all want to know what kind of God we serve? I'm going to give him praise today. I'm just telling you, he, he deserves praise. He deserves praise. Here's the kind of God I serve. If, if he was mad and if he was angry and if he was upset, do y'all think he would create what I'm getting ready to read to y'all if he's a mad God? Revelation 21 verse 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There should be no more death. No more sorrow. No more crying. There'll be no more pain. There'll be no more sickness. For the former things have all passed away. If God was mad, if God was angry, if God didn't like you, do you think he would, in Genesis 1 and 2, everything was perfect? In Revelation 21 and 20, everything's perfect. What God started, he's going to finish. He's a good God. He's a happy God. He loves us. He's for us. Come on, somebody. And I promise you, I wrote this down in my own notes because I, I think about people a lot. I promise when you get to heaven, you're not going to say, well, I don't like that. <laughs> I can't wait to get to this. I'll laugh at myself. It's funny. But the praise is too loud. I don't like that song. Don't do that one. What about this one? I wrote this. It's so good. I don't like the color of my mansion. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> oh, oh, what about this one? Can you believe who God put as my neighbor? <laughs> Come on, y'all. Show me some teeth. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Oh, heaven is a happy place. Heaven's a happy place. Let me go ahead and give this to you. Isaiah chapter 65, because I deal with this a lot. Because some of you are really concerned about, well, I know who didn't make it to heaven. Isaiah chapter 65, let me teach. It's not on my notes, but I felt the Holy Ghost tell me this. Ease your mind. God says, I'm going to wipe away. Any bad thing, any bad memory out of your mind, out of your head. Somebody give God praise on that one. No more tears. No more sickness. No more pain. He's a good God. Amen. Let me, let me give you this. I'm, I'm almost done. Praise team, you guys come. Because if I don't get to praise team up here, I'll go another hour. I got, I got to get them up here. The Pharisees. Everybody said the Pharisees. I want to give this to you because this is so good. We're all about the policies. All about the law. All about, you got to do this, and you got to do that, and you got to do this, you got to. They're about the policies. And their religion, their religion was all about policies. Policies, rules, law, policy. And it's interesting because the word policy, the root word of policy is police. I'm going to let that get in your spirit. The root word for policy is police. Listen to this. Therefore, I wrote this down. Super religious people normally have the mentality that God is like a police officer. The high sheriff of heaven. Mm. 
That God is sitting on a cloud waiting for us to mess up so he can hit us and arrest us and, and put us in a spiritual prison. That's the way some of y'all look at God. And be very careful. Listen to me. Be very careful that the policies, that the law, the rules, the regulations, the bylaws, never overrule the relationship with Jesus Christ. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. See, the, the Pharisees never had a relationship with Jesus Christ. Here's how I know. Y'all remember the woman that was caught in adultery? Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that story in your Bible? Listen to this. When the Pharisees called her, by the way, they were looking, they were, that's what bugs me. You got, I feel the Holy Ghost. Religious people always look for you to mess up. Oh, God, I feel so, I feel, I felt that. Religious people, I told you so. They made a bed, let them lay in it. Y'all, no, nobody, nobody wants that right there. Religious people always stand back and watch. They always stand back and watch, waiting for somebody to mess up. Police! <laughs> yeah, policies, rules, laws, regulations. So they caught this woman in adultery. Listen to this, Allison, so good. Caught this woman in, and they said, Lord, we found her committing adultery. And in our policies, in our law, in our regulation, we are to stone her and we are to kill her. Oh, I love this. I love this because this is my God. If he's a mean God, if he's an angry God, if he hates us, and I hear people, listen to me. I'm going to let me time out because I feel I, I got to slow down. Because the Holy Ghost is speaking to me so fast right now. I hear people say this God's going to get America. God loves America, God's hand is upon America. And let me go ahead and go deeper with y'all this morning, okay? Right while you're having church. I had, my God, if y'all had my cell phone. I can't believe. Listen, I'm just telling y'all. God's hands upon this church. God loves Elkhorn Baptist Church. God loves all churches. But I'm telling you, I think Elkhorn's got to. I'm not waking nobody. I'm just saying. You know, I got to put my wife said, right there. I got to be careful. I got to be careful. Listen, watch this. John chapter 8, I'm going to read this to you. Verse 10 and 11. Just think about this. If God hates us, if God is mad at us, if God is angry at us, they caught a woman in adultery. The law, the procedures, the policy tells us to stone her, to kill her. Jesus stood up and said to her, woman, where are they? <laughs> has, has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. That's the God I serve. That's the God I serve. I'm not making light of sin. But watch this. If you are truly a Christian, watch. That sin messes with you. You don't take a pastor standing over you or a counseling session. Or go behind a curtain. you got a convictor inside of you. And I can see some of you, I wrote this down, you're still struggling. You're, you're sitting here going, Brian, I know what you're saying, but you're still struggling. I, I wrote this in my notes. And you're saying God's angry, God's upset, he, and God turns over tables. I know where y'all going. I got a word for y'all. I, I worked hard on this. And yes, God did turn over tables. It's in the Bible. Yes, he did. But watch, don't misquote that verse. Don't misquote that verse. I hear people say this all the time. There's a time to get mad. I'm, gonna I'm, I'm helping y'all. Don't get mad at me. Let me teach you. Let God love on you. Give God your ears this morning. You'll learn something. I did. John chapter 2 verse 15 says, So he, Jesus, sat down. He wept. He cried. And made a whip. Jesus sat down. He cried. He wept. And he made a whip. I can see Jesus in my spirit. Looking down at the temple. Breaking his heart. He said, I've given you chance after chance after chance 
after chance after chance. And he sat down. How long do y'all think, I, I, God just gave, how long do y'all think it takes to make your will? Quite a while. Quite a while. He didn't rush down there, Logan, and say, I'm going to get you, boy. I'm going to get you. I'm tired of you. That's the kind of God I always, that's the kind of God I grew up with. The Bible says he sat down, made a whip, he cried, he cried. So here's what I'm saying to you. Listen, let me give you another verse. Psalms 145 verse 8. Listen, this, and I dedicate this over y'all today. I'm, I think this is the third time I'm done. Psalm 145 verse 8. The Lord is gracious. He's full of compassion. Huh. huh? Hold on, leave that verse up there. The Lord is gracious. He's full of compassion. Don't miss this. Slow to anger. He just don't jump up off his seat and say, you do it again, I'm going to knock you out. He does not. Y'all listen to me, Elkhorn. I'm going to teach y'all. The Lord is gracious and he's full of compassion. He's slow to anger and great in mercy. Somebody give him praise in here today. Y'all know, y'all know that's truth, right? Y'all know that's truth, right? Y'all look at me, lean in. Be easy on people. Be easy on people. Be easy on people. Be easy on people. Quit judging people. Quit talking about people. Be slow to anger. Show them grace. Show them love. Show them mercy. You'll change this world. Love. Love is what covers a multitude of sin. Not being mean. Not being angry. Not being judgmental. Love. Everybody say love. Here's what I'm saying. God loves us. I don't care what you say. Matter of fact, the Bible says God is. Y'all good. Y'all believe that. And it breaks his heart. When he has to make a whip. How many parents we got in here? Y'all just love beating your kids, whipping your kids. <laughs> oh, in Jesus' name, all right? <laughs> my, my stepfather, he was the kind of daddy that when he whipped you, he would talk to you. I mean, remind you of what you've done. And, and yeah, I'm talking while he was spanking. Lighten it up. I'm talking on your blessed assurance. Boy, I done told you I'll beat you like a, you'll feel it. I mean, man, talking to you. Let me land this plane. God is good. Somebody say amen. Somebody say all the time. Listen, I do not, I do not serve a God that is running around trying to destroy people's lives. Did y'all hear me? I do not serve a God that is running around like a sheriff in heaven with a police with a big old stick in his hand saying, I'm going to kill you if you do it again. He's not like that. I don't serve a God trying to destroy us. I serve a God trying to give us life, trying to show us love, grace, and mercy. And I never thought I'd have to stand in a church and preach this kind of a word to tell Christians that God is love. Bible says God will never leave us or forsake us. <laughs> God is my friend. And I'm going to fight for him this morning. God loves all people. And watch this. God isn't afraid of the devil. Mm. God isn't afraid of the Antichrist. He ain't afraid of Satan. God ain't afraid of you. God ain't afraid of me. God is not afraid of religious people. God is sovereign. Somebody help me. God is in control. When I wrote this down, I don't care if Joe Biden, it's my sermon, I can preach it how I want. I don't care if Joe Biden's our next president or Donald Trump gets back in office. They are not king. I serve the king. His name is King Jesus. Somebody give him praise in this house. 
God knows the end of the story. Hallelujah. God understands my heart. God understands you. I serve a happy Thanksgiving God. Somebody give him a happy Thanksgiving praise here today. Hallelujah. He's happy. He's a happy God. Y'all go ahead and stand up. Hallelujah. Woo! I thought about this as I land this plane. The only person that can make you happy. (laughs) Because a lot of you are trying to find happiness with people. A lot of you are trying to find happiness in other things, in a bottle. A lot of you are trying to find happiness. The only one that can quench your thirst, (laughs) satisfy your soul, is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How many of y'all can testify? He's the only one that can satisfy me. He's the only one that can quench my thirst. He's the only one that can satisfy my soul. That's it. Do y'all want to be happy? If so, you got to know Him. You got to know Him. I serve a happy Thanksgiving God. Elkhorn, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. You say, Brian, it's different this year. Listen to me. You don't, you're already going south on me. We're here. Watch. Don't, I feel the Holy Ghost. Don't worry so much about tomorrow you miss your today. Don't worry so much about tomorrow y'all miss this moment right now. I serve a happy God. He loves me. He loves you. Listen, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please, hell is not happy. Hell is going to be a bad place. That's why they call it hell. Hell is going to be hell. I hear people so ignorant. Well, I'll go down there and party. All right, buddy, take a chance. I'm just telling you this. That God loves us. He's a happy God. Sometimes he just has to sit down and make a whip. Here's what I've noticed. Every time before he makes a whip, he cries. And so in Jesus Christ's name, Milkhorn family, Facebook family, (laughs) my prayer today, above all things, is that you'll come to this altar. Say, Brian, were y'all six feet? Y'all gonna do it six feet. You can make your seat an altar. Y'all can do it. I don't get so caught up in the rules and regulations that I miss my relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't do it. Listen, don't be a Pharisee. Don't be a Sadducee. Let people know that you're a happy person. Don't act like hell. Give people some heaven. Amen. Give people some heaven. And if this is my last sermon, guess what? Watch this. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Don't be coming to that funeral home looking over and going, poor Rafferty. No, I'm a whole lot better than you are right now. I love y'all. I love you so much. So let's come to this altar. Or make your seat an altar. Wherever you're at, do this. Happy Thanksgiving. I serve a happy Thanksgiving God. Let's give him praise one more time. Amen. Come on, he's good to you. Come on, he's good to you. Woo! Come on. We should have been dead a long time ago. But he's got us up this morning. God's got purpose in here today. Happy Thanksgiving. Let's come to this altar. Let's give God some thanks. Amen. Everything that has breath. Let's praise the Lord today in Jesus.